Uh, thanks for joining. Um, so this presentation is mostly about a uh, preview about what, what will be Apache Cara 5. So it's still uh, under design uh, and development. So feel free to, to ask at the end of this talk if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or whatever. Um, so yeah, um, I'm JB. Um, I'm working for as an open source uh, expert in, in Europe for Huawei. I'm also a technical advisor for UPIC. Um, I'm obviously an Apache member for more than 10 years. I don't remember, 15, I guess. And I'm working roughly on 20 Apache projects uh, as a PMC member or committer. So obviously, Caraf, Carmel, ActiveMQ, Felix, ISB, and others. So um, about Caraf at ApacheCon this year, we don't have a full track as we had last year. Uh, the reason is simply because um, we didn't have a lot of, um, I would say, talks submitted uh, at the right time. Uh, actually, we, we got it later. Uh, so we only have one talk this year about Caraf. It's this one. So it's part of the highlights track. Um, so the purpose is to give you a preview about the Caraf 5 and a very quick update about Caraf 4. Uh, obviously, we you know that we are always available on the mail list, on mail, on Slack, so you can uh, you you can find out uh, where anyone in, involved in uh, Apache Cara. Uh, we had the chance to 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 do a, a quick fever cast. Uh, it was last week uh, about Apache Cara. So if you want to have some details and and preview about uh, Cara Five as well. Um, and uh, for some of you, 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 you know that we did a, a, a CARAF meetup, it was last year. Uh, we plan to do a new CARAF meetup probably before the end of this year or beginning of the next one. So uh, we will keep you posted on, uh, on the main list uh, and on Slack. So uh, a quick overview about the CARAF ecosystem. Um, because CARAF is a kind of umbrella project that uh, gather several sub-projects. So what we're going to talk today is CARAF runtime. Uh, so it's more uh, an applications runtime slash launcher. So you will see the main difference between CARAF 4 and 5 is we are moving a little bit from a pure runtime slash kind of application runtime to something more like a launcher, multi multiple kind of application launcher. We also have Decanter. So Decanter is uh, basically a framework for data collection and, and gestion. It's mostly used for monitoring, technical monitoring, but also BAM, so business activity monitoring. We also have uh, Caraf Cave. Um, Caraf Cave is actually itself in two parts. You have the first part is basically an artifacts uh, repository manager compliant with Maven layout and also a kind of Docker registry like. But we also have uh, in Cave what we name the deployer. The purpose of a deployer is to be able to push some comments to uh, existing kind of instances. So there are no synchronization between the instances by Cave itself, but it allows you to say, okay, I'm going to install this application on my 10 or, 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 or 100 instances of Caraf running. Uh, we also have Sela. So this time, Sela is, is a pure cluster-like uh, approach for Caraf. So it pro this time, we you can synchronize the Caraf in instances all together. So it means that any change you're going to do on, the, on one instance will be uh, replicated on other instances. So that's a pure cluster. And finally, we have one grower. So one grow is more um, a prime model. So it looks like the OAGI prime model, but the main difference is it uses a, a flat class loader instead of a, a kind of graph class loader as we use in a regular OAGI uh, approach. So about the CARAF runtime. Um, so so the, the runtime up to now is a light, full-featured application runtime. By light, it means that you don't need a lot of resources uh, to run a, a very thin Caraf layer. That's why Caraf is can be used uh, from embedded devices up to large data center and, and runtime. So 
it, it's pretty interesting to see that the, the use cases can be pretty different depending on your, of the requirement and so the resources as well. It is a cloud and container really. So we provide a Cara standard distribution as a Docker image. Um, it's cloud ready, especially for the, with the latest change we did in Cara for free, because you can pass, for instance, with Kubernetes, you can pass the configuration and override configuration using config map. So that's that's pretty pretty interesting. Um, and the, the big advantage of Caraf is very flexible in terms of use cases you can cover. So the, the, the classic use cases where we can see Caraf used right now is mostly back-end microservices, front-end applications, IoT and integration, generally speaking, uh, serverless runtime, so it allows you to control over uh, or execute a kind of smart processes and bootstrap when you need. And processes orchestration, meaning that you can uh, trigger execution of some process directly in Caraf. And so Caraf can be a kind of orchestrator where you execute uh, different processes. Um, it's the use cases we, we, we know that exist. There are probably other use cases that we don't know yet uh, or we don't know at all. So yeah, that's, that's the current use cases. So in terms of releases in branches, uh, so today, the main um, Cara branch is actually 4.3x. We are working hard on Cara 4.4x for, to update on main. So we, we discussed about this uh, again this morning. So it's almost done. Uh, so the main difference is the main, Cara 4.4, is pure AGI R8 uh, uh, version. Uh, we're going to upgrade to Pax Web 8. Uh, uh, Greg did a lot of effort uh, on Pax Web for more than a year now, uh, and so it is a great opportunity to upgrade in Caraf as well. So the, the latest stable version we release is 4.3.3, which is now AGI R7 uh, com compliant runtime uh, using Pax Web uh, 7.3 JDK 11 plus extra. You can still use uh, 4.2. X, which is also basically the same. The main difference is about the Pax web version and the JDK uh, used as well. And finally, we have Cara 5. So Cara 5 is, is for now is outside of the uh, Apache repo because it's a kind of fork and uh, some kind of complete refactoring. So it's not a complete refactoring in the meaning that uh, we still are using some part of Cara 4 optionally. But the core by itself is really a complete refactoring and bootstrapping. So if you take a look, what is a CARA for today is OSGI for a runtime. So it means that in CARA 4, you don't have a choice. You have to use OSGI. Uh, so even if we try to hide OSGI a lot, uh, meaning that you can directly deploy web applications uh, without knowing exactly what is OSGI, at some point, it's clear that if you want to really leverage all the Cara 4 features, it's better to you know OSGI. So it means that some use cases cannot be um, easily implemented or some framework cannot be supported easily by Cara 4 because we need OSGI uh, layer. Um, we have a bunch of features available in Cara 4. Um, I'm thinking about standard enterprise extra. And we have, we can see that we have a great, great adoption of Cara 4 as it is. So we have other Apache projects that use uh, Cara 4. So I'm thinking about Apache Unami, Apache Brooklyn, but we also have big players that use uh, Cara in the ecosystem. So it's the case for Netflix, Red Hat, Talent, Open Data, uh, Nexus uh, as a Maven repo manager extra. So the purpose of Cara five is to, okay, what's the issues or concerns we have today with Cara 4? And uh, what's the next step without breaking uh, anything? So the purpose is we take what is good in Cara 4. We can define still some, some part as an optional dependency, but we want to address more use cases and, and convince more users to use uh, Cara 5. The purpose of Caraf is still as an application runtime is to be able for you to deploy any kind of applications in Caraf, and then you can you can leverage existing features 
and, and use some kind of consistency. So the purpose of Cara 5 is to be really a more generic runtime and launcher, meaning that OSGI is not required anymore. So it means that if you want to still deploy your OSGI application in Cara 5, it's possible, but it's optional. So it means that at its core, OSGI has been removed. So you don't need the OSGI framework by default. It's up to you to define, okay, I'm gonna, I want to use Cara 5 as, no, uh, as an OSGI runtime. And so I'm going to add the OSGI application manager. It's still service-oriented runtime at core. But this time, instead of using OSGI as a service for runtime, it's going to use its own implementation of the service uh, implementation. So uh, it supports na natively different kind of application via application manager services. So it means that in the same pair of five application runtime, you can define, I would like to support OSGI applications. I would like to support Spring Boot applications. I would like to support, I don't know, micro profile slash CDI applications. It is up to you to define the, the, the kind of application you want to support in your target runtime. Uh, the thing is, all these applications at the end that they use this, uh, a kind of cross application registry service registry, which is the Cara 5 service registry. So it means that an OSGI application can interact with a Spring Boot application via the Cara 5 service registry. That's, that's the purpose. So it means that we can integrate it uh, all together your different kind of applications. So if we take a look about the architecture, uh, so what we, we have at the core is the service loader. So basically the service loader is uh, the part of Cara 5 that discover the Cara 5 services and be able to load it. This, these services are basically loaded in the service registry. This one is the service registry from Cara 5. And you have two core services that, that came by default with Cara is the config service. So the config service is basically how to set up your, I mean, defining the list of applications you want to run, defining all the properties you need for your services extra, and also the lifecycle, lifecycle service. So some services may want to be started or stopped when Cara have start and stop. So you can be, you can hook and add a callback in the lifecycle service. Then all this ecosystem is started by a builder. So it means that the builder, uh, it's the part that you're gonna uh, define in your code just to start Cara. So you don't need a builder because by default, the main, the Cara main create a builder, the default builder for you. But if you want, you can interact and create your own builder if needed. You're gonna see that later. So what is the Cara uh, 5 service? So it's what we name the K5 uh, services. So it's a pure classic Java service provider interface. So it's a SPI, meaning that the K5 service is described by an interface as you used to do when you use OSGI. But this time you're gonna implement a, 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 a K5 service. So it means that any kind of application can create and register K5 services. Uh, because it's a, the only requirement is to be in a pure Java. So as soon as you use Java, whatever is in your IGI or Spring Boot or CDI, whatever it, it, the kind of framework you're gonna use, as soon as it's a Java-based application, you can use and register your K5 services. So optionally, a service can have a name. So by default, Cara 5 use the uh, class simple name, but you can also define your own service name. And you can eventually have a priority. The priority is if you want to define some dependencies or all the dependency between your services. So you can say my service A will start before my service B, or my service A will be registered before my service B. So that's the purpose of the priority. So this is an example of, uh, this is the interface describing a service in uh, K5. So you can see that this is an interface as you used to do using OSGI, but this interface used default value and default implementation. So you can see that the, that the default priority is a 1000. And you can implement basically three methods. The first method is the name. So it's up to you to return the string describing the name of your service. You can uh, return the priority. So it's just a int defining the, uh, the, the, the order, the starting order. 
And the main uh, and the most important thing is the on register uh, method. So the on register method allows you to is a kind of callback that is called when your service is registered in the K5 service registry. And so you can see that the service registry itself is passed as an argument of your service. So it means that you can interact directly with any other services deployed in, in Cara 5. So the, the registry is basically a map. Okay, what are you going to uh, register in, in this uh, registry is basically uh, an entry, which is a service and an implementation of a service. Uh, by default, Cara 5 is able to uh, find any services uh, as it uses sp SP. So uh, as, uh, as soon as you describe your service as a SP, it can be automatically loaded by Cara 5. Uh, you have some core services provided by uh, Cara, so the lifecycle and config services. I already talked about that. Uh, the class loader service is uh, right now is mostly an empty shell. But at the, at the end, you can create class loader for you and your applications. Uh, the service loading is ordered by priority, as I said before. Uh, and so the service is, it can be shared by the different applications running in Cara 5. So uh, once you get the service registry through the on register method, uh, it's pretty easy to get any service from this registry. Uh, to get all services implementing a certain type, register your own service or unregister any service. So thanks to the service registry uh, argument, you can do whatever you want with the Cara file. So this is the, basically the service registry is, is evenly simplified, but you, you basically get the signature. So you can get a service from the service registry. You can find any services uh, by type. You can add your own service, remove any service. And you can close or start the registry pretty pretty easy. One of the main uh, or core services you can find in K5 is the configuration service. So the configuration service is basically used as um, basically is a pojo. Okay, is a kind of bin where you're gonna interact. So this bin can be can be populated using some code. So it means that. Uh, using directly the builder, you can pass your 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 configuration, but you can also use external and additional services to populate these config services through all the format. It's the case, for instance, the properties lo uh, service loader. So the properties allows you to define the Cara config backed by a property um, file, for instance. Uh, it could be also defined by a JSON. Uh, configuration, or you can create your own service that populates the Cara config one using, I don't know, YAML or whatever. So uh, basically, the, the two main things you're gonna find in the Cara config service is all the properties, which is key value uh, that that can be used for any um, part of uh, or applications running in Cara five, and you can you, you will find also the list of applications you want to run into your Cara five instance. The, another service that you can find is the lifecycle service. So this time, this Cara life lifecycle is something that you, can, you may want to use if your serv service needs to be started. Basically, what, what does it mean? It means that in your service, you can add some, add some callback that the lifecycle service will, will basically call when, you, when it starts itself. So uh, instead of doing, okay, I'm gonna do start at that time and stop at that time. What the only thing you have to do is, okay, I just want to add my own code in the lifecycle service. And basically starting the service registry means, means just starting the lifecycle service. So this is the, the code uh, we have here. So basically you can see that I'm in the service registry. This is basically the code of the start method of the service registry and what I, uh, I would like to do is just to call the start method of the car of life cycle service itself but so basically in car of five by default you have two core services it's the config service and uh, the life cycle service but you can also add additional services provided by their own artifact so it means that in car of five you're going to find a list of additional artifact services uh, where you can just add automatically this artifact into the class loader of your application and, and it's and it's done, the, uh, the, the service will be added in Cara 5. Uh, 
right now what we implemented is the class path protocol and the service that allows you in the configuration to use class path uh, colon and the path to a jar file inside your, your jar file the extra service allows you to extract any uh, any file containing a jar uh, on the file system that's the, the purpose of this service is to be compliant with CARA 4 applications so it means that you can basically mimic what we have in CARA 4 application uh, runtime using the expert service. The JSON config loader is a service that populates the CARAF config service with a JSON file. The properties config loader is the same, but this time using um, system properties, environment variables, or pro pro property files. Uh, the welcome banner is a very simple service that just display a fancy uh, message when, the, when CARAF starts. Uh, and finally, we have the two main areas that man Managing the application, so we are the OIJ application manager that uh, looks like a CARA 4 uh, kind of uh, support, and we also have a Spring Boot application manager that allows you to directly uh, start, run, and start uh, your Spring Boot applications. So this is an example of this is a concrete example. So this this is an extract of the CARA 4 like application uh, distribution using Caraf uh, 5. So you can see that the org Apache Caraf boot is the Caraf 5 core system. And then you can see the, the, the artifact coming from uh, additional services. So you can see there in my uh, jar file, in my Caraf 5 application, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna start the JSON config loader, the class path protocol handler, the OGI application manager, and the welcome banners additional services. So you, you just have to define the dependency like this, and it's done. CARAF uh, 5 will uh, automatically load these additional services and start them. So now how we, do we start an, uh, um, a CARAF 5 application? Uh, so basically, by default, if you use the CARAF main, provided by default by CARAF, so you just have to do java-jar, my.jar, for instance, and the main will do CARAF builder build start. And, and it, it's enough. So this builder will automatically load any services, CARAF 5 services, and start them. In, instead of doing that, so if you, don't, if you want to hook and, uh, and basically inject any services into your uh, CARAF runtime, then what you can do is basically to uh, provide the loader, so you use CARA Builder Loader, and this time you just define the list of services you want to run. And so you, it means that you can customize your services uh, executed by CARA 5. So this is an example of a pure CARA 5 service. So the first thing you have to do is basically to implement a simple service, and this simple service class implements the service. So the service is provided by CARA this time. And so you can see that in my example, I just override the name method with just returning my service. And here I override my own register method. Um, what, this is not enough. So this is the mi minimal piece. The second piece that I need to be able to load automatically my services. In my jar file, I have to add uh, in the meta in folder services, I have to add a, a file name org Apache Cara boots p that services, that service, sorry, and then I define the location of my implementation. So the full qualified name of the class implementation. Eventually, I will show you later how you can hook in the life cycle, but you imagine that using the service registry, I can access to the car of life cycle. So it's pretty easy to interact with the car of life cycle just to add a callback at stop and stop. So this is the example of how I can inject uh, the uh, my code when when the CARAF lifecycle service started. So you can see there that I'm in the on register method. So it means that I have access to the service registry. So using the service registry, I can get my CARAF lifecycle service. And then once I have my CARAF uh, lifecycle service, I can just uh, add on start on shutdown. And this on start on shutdown allows me to define any code that I would like to call back when the car of life cycle is started or stopped. 
a special kind of uh, service is the first one is the OAGI application manager service. So this OAGI application manager is responsible to start the OAGI framework for you and to deploy and start uh, deploy install and start your OAGI applications. So this is an example of a kind of JSON file that where you can define. Okay, this is the configuration of my framework. So you can see that I'm using the service name as a prefix. So oagi.storage directory is the location of my framework on the file system. The oagi.cache is also the, 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 the location of the framework cache. And, and so this is my property used by uh, the uh, oagi application manager, manager service itself. And additionally, I can register. This is the location of my bundle that I would like to start by, by Cara 5. And you can see there that I provide I provide the URL there, and I also provide the type. So it means that I can specify that my application is an OAGI application. And so uh, the uh, OAGI application manager service is able to uh, run it and manage it. This is The type is optional, meaning that each application manager service is able to detect some kind of uh, application. And so in the case of the OAGI application manager service, what he, he, he knows is he's he gonna check the manifest of the jar file, and if the manifest contains some OAGI headers, then he will detect that is an OAGI application, and so he's gonna manage it. Basically the same for the Spring Boot uh, application. So it, it's basically the same. This time is not the, the OAGI header in the manifest, it's more so on Spring Boot uh, entry in the manifest. And so then, uh, the uh, Spring Boot application manager is responsible to, to create the class loader, to start your application, Spring Boot application, um, um, automatically and control the lifecycle of your application. So it means that if you have some existing Spring Boot applications and you want to group several Spring Boot applications all together in a single runtime, you just have to def define this Carat JSON. And in the application array, you just define the list of applications you want to run, and it's done. You don't have to do anything else. You just provide the Caraf JSON. So now in terms of packaging. So uh, we, we saw the different approach to create uh, the services. We saw that we can populate the Caraf JSON to define the list of applications we want to run. Um, at the end, what you can do is two kind of packaging. The first packaging you can do is to repackage all as an executable jar. So it means that all will be in a single jar, all will be embedded in, a, in this jar. Uh, so it means that the jar will contain itself some jar. Uh, and, and then you can just do java.jar, java java-jar, sorry, my.jar. And it's done. I mean, uh, you just have to run Java and it's done. So you can imagine to integrate this is a, in a Docker is pretty easy. I mean, you don't have to do anything. Right now, when you want to use Cara 4 in a Docker image, you have two options. The first option is you take the official Docker image and you do some change on it, or you repackage uh, basically Cara uh, in a kind of Docker image with your application extra. So it could be a, a little bit painful. You know, you have to deal with the ETC folder, with the system folder extra. Uh, with Cara 5, it's, it's largely easier meaning that you just provide the jar file and the JVM and it's done. Uh, it's Kubernetes fr friendly because for instance, the config properties. So instead of using a car of JSON, what you can do is uh, using the properties service loader. Uh, in, that, in that time, you, you don't use the car of JSON, you're gonna use some environment variables. So it means that you can inject uh, all the car of file configuration through a, a Kubernetes config map. The distribution, so it doesn't mean that you, you are forced to use the, uh, the embedded and big uh, jar file. Instead, you can still use the old Cara 4 approach. So it's pretty uh, similar to the Cara 4 approach. So you can use a tarball or a zip archive. So thanks to the class path protocol handler, you can do that. And uh, so basically, you have two options. The first option is you still, even if you use Cara 4 applications, uh, you, you want to use the Java, uh, the, the fat jar file, that's possible. Or another option is simply to use an archive as you, you, you do before, um, and, and, and so it works. So you can see there that in my example, 
um, this is a kind of four like application and you can see this time i'm using the system folder and the system folder contains my four free free uh, bundles so it means that my kara 5 application will run kara 4 like bundle and so it means that anything you you deploy in the past in kara 4 will still work out of the box with kara 5 and this is an example of the kara uh, uh, Kara 4 like uh, distribution running in Kara uh, 5. So you can see there, I, I use the, the fat jar approach. So I just do Java dash jar K4, like Kara 4 um, the jar. And so you can see there that actually it's Kara 5 started, but you can see in the log messages that is actually the Kara 4 uh, pieces that, that starting. So it means that. Anything running today in Kara 4 will run out of the box in Kara 5 again. So what, what is pretty interesting is because imagine now with a, an application like Decanter. So Decanter is a pure AGI application that allows us to monitor, do some kind of data collection. So as I said just in the previous slide, it means that Decanter can work out of the box in Kara 5 thanks to the AGI application manager. But it also means that Decanter will be able to, for instance, get any metrics from the JMX and bin server, but the one from Caraf itself, but also from external application. By external applications, I mean that application you are running in Caraf 5, which are not designed to be compliant uh, with, uh, uh, with OSGI, for instance. So it means that Decanter, out of the box, will be able to monitor and extract data from, from your Spring Boot or micro profile applications. So what's the next step now? Um, so Kara 5 is still under discussion slash development. Um, I, I spent with, with Francois and others, I spent some time to try to sketch, Romain also help us um, to sketch and to define the, the, the next step of Kara 5. So it's on my GitHub, you can take a look. Uh, I'm still working on it, and uh, not every day, but uh, almost every week. Uh, so it's the perfect time, I think, to provide your feedback and thoughts, not on the code itself. I mean, you you can for sure, but in more in terms of roadmap and do you think K K5 makes sense? Um, are you? Uh, I mean, do you plan to use it if we release it extra? So it's still open to, for proposals and contributions. Um, my plan is to move to the Apache Kara Git um, as soon as we have an MVP ready to run. So I would like to do uh, this pre pretty quickly. And the purpose is to move forward on the first RC by the end of this year. Um, that, that's that, the, the rough idea. Uh, obviously, if you send, uh, or I would say most of you send back uh, feedback like uh, is useless, I don't want to use it, or it doesn't make sense, whatever. Uh, this plan can change, but the purpose is really to move forward and to have something uh, really pretty pretty soon. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, I think we are running out, uh, quite a lot of time, but uh, you can still use the mailing list. You can use uh, the CAF Slack channel. Um, you can also directly ask on, uh, on the, the the session on, on open so yeah if you have any questions comments or whatever please let me know all right i don't see any any question for now so what I propose is um, obviously I'm going to share this presentation uh, if you want to take a look uh, later.